Hey, it's Andrew, also known as Songs to Wear Pants To. And another Andrew, also known as Gonna Rolla. And you're listening to Nobody's, Nobody's listening. listening. I got a bad feeling about this. No! Nobody's listening, where we tell funny life stories and invite you to do the same. Hey, how you doing, podcast people? This is Nobody's Listening Podcast. Oh, my goodness. It is episode what? I don't even care. I don't even care. It's uh, episode 174, brought to you the week of July 26, 2011. This is a show where we tell funny life stories, yours and ours. I'm your host, and uh, real quick, hey, did you know we're brought to you by DrawYourPicture.com where you can get just about anything drawn for pretty darn cheap? Yes, we are. And we're also brought to you by GoToMeeting. So check out DrawYourPicture.com and also check out GoToMeeting. We'll tell you about more of that in just a minute. But again, my name is James and with me is my wonderful host, John. I wish you were here. Stein Clauber. How you doing, John? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm psyched, man. Are I'm you psyched. psyched? I'm crazy. I'm psyched, I'm too, ready to go. because we just had Songs to Wear Pants to guy um, and, I, and Gunnarola <laughs> pimping us how'd you How'd you do that? Well, that is thanks to a wonderful fan of ours. Uh, his name is Justin, and he's got a website that I'll pimp in, in, in return. Uh, the Space Turtle is how we know him most at thespaceturtle.com. Yeah, the Space Turtle. Yeah, so thanks. He, he, was, he was up in Canada, apparently, and, and they were touring through there, and they're on a tour right now in July. And so he just wow. asked them, and they said yes. And so Man. now we're famous. Laser so. high five to Justin. No joke. <laughs> that was awesome. Yep, you got to get... So, so don't forget, you just got <laughs> yes. a virtual bump, fist bump. Bump it. So, uh, that was so cool. Bump it. Yes. Uh, anyway, we always start with an opening song, and uh, even though we tell stories on the show, so I would like to do that right now. And this is a little song that I like to call, it's from Perry Grip. I know it seems like we should have something from uh, Songs to Wear Pants to, but I, I just love this song, and I wanted to play it for you today. It's called Thank Porcupine you. Eating a Carrot. It goes something like this. Porcupine <laughs> eating a carrot. Porcupine eating a carrot. A lady hands him a carrot. And then he's all a num and num num num. Porcupine yeah. loves a carrot. Climbs a fence to get to the uh -huh. carrot. A guy is watching him eat a carrot. And then he's all a num and num 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 num. Yeah, this is for real, people. When I first saw you eating that carrot, I knew you were no ordinary porcupine. And then he's all a num and num. And give it to the greedy rich giraffe. But you just keep <laughs> on eating that carrot because you are the porcupine. You notice, I mean, I love the guy's songs, and this is not a diss. But he sings about literally what's going on in the video. And then there's a voice that comes out and says, People try to diss you for doing whatever you're doing. Yeah, and then he says, But keep on doing whatever you're doing. He's got some some themes up there. Yeah, together. and that works. I love it. And this one, he had angels singing in the background. <laughs> Could we just have that play in in the background the entire time? Just this. Yes. Hey, John, how you doing? Welcome to Nobody's Listening. Yeah, nobody's listening. Man, that could get annoying after a while. Let's do it one more time. Yeah. So my mom was talking to me today about burgers and stuff. And oh, yeah. those fries. Oh, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, my son is a huge, James, my youngest son. He is, is a huge. huge fan. Yeah. He is huge. He's and giant. he's a huge fan he's of. The fattest uh, kid I've ever he seen. He watches him a lot. But he's he's adopted some Perry Gripisms, and oh. so whenever he is talking about food, you know, in his own little two-year-old voice way, mm -hmm. he says yum 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 yum, and that's exactly <laughs> what he does. I'm not even lying. I'm like, I got to get a sound bite of that because it's so hilarious. Uh, he's eating ice cream tonight at Burger King, and yum 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 yum. Oh yum. man! Hey, uh, let's do this. <laughs> Go ahead and be honest with you. I'm gonna go with this, but um, 
I, I hit the wrong button. It's weekly update time. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got the worst <laughs> news ever. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a no. bad update. You were talking about your son and, and his, uh, you know, his adopting things. I got to ask you a question. What, what is so, what is wrong? I mean, I know something was wrong because every, every child's show has something wrong with it. Everything a kid loves, you know, is going to come under attack by parenting groups and, and Christian groups yeah. and stuff like that. What was ever wrong specifically with Power Rangers? Because I, you know, I was too old for that that thing, but it was huge, like monkey huge yeah. for years. What was wrong with Power Rangers? And I'll tell you why I'm asking after you answer my question, if you know. Okay. I seem to recall um, because of the action in it, they did a lot of flashing uh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and kids that ha- are um, sensitive to that or, or mm. epileptic or whatnot okay, would yeah. actually cause them to seize. Okay, I've heard that about seizures. Pokemon as well. But I'm, I'm thinking there was something deep, darker wrong with it. I can't remember. I, I never knew what it was. Maybe it was the action that, that kids were killing each other and fighting each other. and Beating the crap yeah, out of each other. Yeah, beating the crap out of each other. I don't know. Um, but, but my, my kids, the reason why I'm saying it is my kids have found Power Rangers on Netflix streaming and they are hopelessly addicted. Like my daughter is leading the charge and oh, no. I need to know real quick <laughs> if there's anything wrong with it. Cause they're not mimicking anything yet. Matter of fact, the stuff that they are mimicking is hilarious because they're talking about these bad guys and they they put their hands out front like this and then they jump and that's all they do is jump and <laughs> and so they're they're going around the house both of them like that my son can't do it without moving his arms up and down because he's you know just odd shaped and has a giant head but um, I'm I'm sure there's people in the chat room that know about you know Power Rangers and all that but they've gone power power. Uh, Rangers Mystic Force into Jungle oh, yeah. Fury and and all these kinds of things and they love them they love them and I go in there and I look at it for a minute and I'm just like okay how many how many times are they gonna roll around get blown backwards by something oh you know and yeah. and have to conversate about it that's the only thing I don't like about Asian style cartoons like uh, uh was it dragon ball b and 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 power rangers <laughs> is they they do a lot of talking and pa- and powering up and conversating with the bad guys you know yeah it's like i just want you guys to knock down buildings and kill each other not you know you are gonna fight and we will go we are, you know that whole stuff so i don't know <laughs> is there anything wrong with power rangers though because i need to know now I don't. I don't know. I'm I think not going to ban really, them from watching it. People thought it was because it was, you know, how they're always fighting and stuff, and little kids imitate that. Yeah. Uh, that that was the biggest thing that I I didn't I didn't get into it either. I just remember. Well, I just remember uh, the, the tripping it out people did over Pokemon and how oh my gosh kids are going to grow up and they're going to play darker, eviler games and that hasn't happened, guy. You know what's happened? Is we just got twenty one year olds still playing Pokemon. That's all. <laughs> That's all that happened. They never played anything else. So go Pokemon, yep. dude. Catch them all if you got to. So <laughs> if you can, yeah. Good you know luck. They're making more. Stands for yeah, Pocket Monster. What <sighs> what what's your, what do you have? What do you have for uh, for your weekly oh, update? Man. My weekly update. Well, I got to start by saying. Um, all last week, I was a bachelor, no kids, no wife. Oh. They were all up in West Virginia. So I had a lot of time to myself. The house was empty. Um, I can't say that I particularly like that, but that was the case last week. And um, so I had some time to watch some Netflix stuff. So, I mean, I blew through a few things. Uh, I tried to watch a few movies that I thought would be good because Film Sack was talking about them. And I just, I was, oh, these are terrible. I can't watch them because <laughs> they're just so dumb. Mortal Kombat. I mean, I loved it in college, but it was terrible trying to revisit it oh yeah um the golden child i just couldn't do it no but anyway i uh, i watched this cool thing on special effects uh particularly makeup and um uh it was just talking about you know some of the monsters that they made and and just some of the special effects that they did i, I think it was called uh i can't remember the name of it. it's on netflix something about skin neat skin or something like that mm-hmm. anyways i have to i have to preface this a little bit. Mm-hmm. When I was a young child, I accidentally saw part of the movie The Exorcist. Oh gosh. 
specifically the scene where the little girl rises up out of the bed and vomits. Of course. And scared the crap out of me. I cannot tell you explicitly how bad that I was shaken after I saw that yeah. one little scene. And ever since then, every time I see that little girl's face, I want to punch it and yell <laughs> at the TV and then run out of the house. Well, they, uh, they, one of the, the special effects they were talking about was that little girl in that scene and, and stuff. And it was late at night, and the little girl's face came up on the TV screen that I was watching. And mind you, this is you know just a few days ago. And I saw it, and it scared the crap out of me again, <laughs> except I didn't have anybody to run to. I was all by myself. And so I'm just like, all right, I'm, I'm a grown man. I can take this. And I uh-huh. just didn't look at the TV for the rest of the time. But Uh-oh. after, after I, that scene passed and the show was over and it was time to go to sleep, the, the house just seemed to get really dark. <laughs> and, um, and there was, there was noises coming from the house. <laughs> you should have was- watched it, John, because sometimes when you watch stuff like that and you see how it was made, it takes all the – you know, the scariness <laughs> it out of it. It doesn't. It doesn't? It, it, no, I, I can just see a picture of that little girl's face, and it scared the mess out of me. Uh, and and, the, and I could hear, you know, the little voice because they were showing a clip from the movie, mm-hmm. and that little, oh, it's freaking me out now. <laughs> and it's dark right now, and I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I, when, you know, I, when I hear noises in the house, I don't usually think there's somebody in the house. I think there's something in the house, mm-hmm. and that always freaks me out. So. See, I thought you were going a different direction with the story, and, and not that I was disappointed at all, but uh, just disappointed <laughs> in you as a man. But, um, oh, I, you know, I'm scared. But, but uh, I, I just, <laughs> for some reason, you said makeup, and I remember, you know, I've seen your Facebook photos, and, and you apparently like to do makeup, you know, like, you hey. have, and I do too. It's a spe- it's like special effects, and in, co- in high school, I did special effects makeup, and, and I've seen you done up as an old man and different things like that. Um, so I was thinking that somehow or another you would have stumbled on a, an effects thing for clown makeup. And I was thinking <laughs> how terrible that no. would be for your family. Because if I was your wife and I saw you walking up to me with clown makeup, I'd be like, John, it, don't do that. It's not over. <laughs> I can, I can do better. I can do better. <laughs> so I don't know. Because the only time you wear clown makeup is when you're breaking up with people. So that's not true. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. No, uh. it's not. I haven't done that in a long time. Of course, I haven't worn clown makeup in a long time. That's what I'm that. saying. Yeah, if she started seeing you dressed up like John Wayne Gacy, she'd have to be wondering what's up. Oh my gosh! So anyway. this is no breakup. <laughs> you gonna see a magic track? Yeah. Anyway, uh, John, have you ever been? Have you ever been on an online meeting before, like on the internet? Yes. Yeah. You know, have you ever had to set one up yourself? Yes. Really? Do you know how difficult it can be to get those things started? Yes. <laughs> it's so frustrating and difficult. You have to dial these numbers, and then you have to get yeah. the person on the other side to uh-huh. collaborate, and it's just oh. My well, goodness. in your reputation's at stake, at stake, if anything goes wrong, I mean, it just it's you. You know, you've called these people together. Yeah. It was supposed to be easier than meeting in person, but see, that's why people like you need the easiest, most reliable online meeting service ever. Go to meeting. What's that? It, it's it's brought to you by Citrix. It's a online meeting service where everyone can join in the meeting in seconds without any technical headaches, and that's the key right there. No. Go to meeting is so easy. You'll have your first meeting up and running in seconds, not minutes, not hours. And uh, our people can try it out for free. Uh, go to go to meeting dot com again. Go to meeting dot com. Click on try it free, and then enter promo code podcast again you can see it for yourself with a free trial visit gotomeeting.com click try it free button and enter promo code podcast and then let us know what you think and john you should yeah. give it a try too don't be don't be making people mad at you because you you know you made them do a meeting go to gotomeeting.com try it out i'll do it just for you <sighs> good I, I appreciate it Arthur! all right it's time for some news um psh- our live shows, if you haven't guessed, have been moved to Tuesday nights. I thought we'd mention that last week, but people were acting like, oh, what, what, why not Monday? Um, what do you know? So we moved it to Tuesday nights, 930, so that's what you need to be. That's where you need to be on Tuesday nights at 930 Eastern, uh, right there at nlcast.com slash live, and you can join the people. Speaking of the people, let's talk about the people in the chat room right now. 
There's quite a few folks in there right now joining us. Uh, Mishy, uh, 82, Jacqueline Face, Human Headbox, Dr. Quest, DC King, Dark U, uh, Captain Narthex, Vampire, the- Teo is listening, JJ Cool for Life, and a bunch of anonymous folks. Thank you for joining us. You can join us, too, every Tuesday night. Um, also want to challenge you guys to join the community. A few weeks ago, we started uh, uh, trying to raise money uh, under the banner uh, called On the Air for Kids. You can find out more about it at nlcast.com slash kids. But we're giving away 90% of every bit of money we raise uh, with the show uh, to, uh, to, to charities, specifically uh, BGMC, which helps kids all over the world, Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge. And our first month, which was August, wait, no, August, what comes before July? June? Yes. No. May. June. What comes before June? May. Uh, May, May. May, you guys raised $200 uh, for charity in one month. And I just had my wife pop the, uh, the, the totals for last month, which would be uh, June. You guys raised $270 uh, for BGMC. So t- a total of 400 and seventy bucks in just two months, John. Does that not blow your mind? That's awesome. It's crazy. I want to give everybody a high five. I w- wish I could think of some way to personally thank these people. Well, thank you. We could do it right here. Thank you guys for for helping us out. You can help out too. Thank you. Uh, there's several ways. One of them would be to uh, nlcast.com/kids and sign up for a dollar a week. You know, if that's four bucks a month, or even ten dollars a month, or, or give a one-time gift. Um, or go to NL, I'm sorry, uh, drawyourpicture.com and order a, a drawing. That's what a lot of folks have been doing is let me do some artwork for them. And uh, a good chunk of the money comes uh, from there. Uh, or you can uh, support our sponsors or check out the NLCast iPhone and Android apps in their respective uh, marketplaces. And uh, you'll get weekly bonus content and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but if you join the community, um, you're going to get benefits above and beyond what the average listener gets. Uh, and more information on that after you've joined. But you'll get access to all the uh, bonus content, pre-show content, post-show content, special uh, online meetups and contests and all kinds of good stuff. So, um, you know, no matter what you give, whether it's a one-time $1 gift or if you hook us up, um, that's all up to you. But uh, please do that, nlcast.com slash kids. Help us to uh, podcast for a reason uh, because we're on the air for kids. That's what it's about. Awesome. All right, it's time for our main segment. Let me play the one I meant to play earlier. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That that sound clip makes me feel strong. It makes me want to grit my teeth and, and go through three or four frames of breathing heavy and yeah. and then shooting people. <laughs> it's a metal slug thing. Anyway, uh, to, we're doing a, we're going back in the day of the hip hop scene. Uh, it's Mike and the lyrics in the loop. You know what I mean? Just a mere child in the capital of the nation. When I heard Sugar Hill on my favorite station. Drop what I was doing. Took a plane to the city. See, you get the hard parts. <laughs> <laughs> Old school DC talk. Anyway, what we're doing is we're yeah. going back to the day of the earliest NLCast uh, uh, episodes, and we're going to do a theme show today. And today's theme was suggested to us by none other than John Steinklobber. And hey. we're doing summer camp. We're going to do our uh, the NLCast version of summer camp. So Camp stories. John, since it was your idea, um, you know, we put it out there to the Facebook community, to the uh, Twitter community. We've got several voicemails and stories sent to us, but we would like, uh, John, would you do the honors of starting off uh, and entertaining us with a camp story? Oh, man, I would love to. First of all, I must say, I'm a big fan of camp. Um, I have gone to camp a lot, and when I grew up and when I was in college, I got to tour with a drama group that went to many camps in the area. And I, I should I should say, James, that this actually kind of ties back into your neighborhood where you're at now. Okay. Because my very first camp was a kids' camp at Masterpiece Gardens. No way. Totally. Awesome. I went there, and since uh, since I'm kicking it off, I might as well start off with that story. Okay. I got okay. So I I, I came from kind of a family that you know didn't have a whole lot growing up and stuff. So I got a lot of hand me downs, and so one of the hand me downs I got was shoes. 
And I thought, well, these are great shoes. And you're probably wondering, well, how do shoes tie into camp? Well, let me tell you how they tie into camp. We play a lot of games at camp, Mm -hmm. you know. There's games where you you kick the ball into the sky and it never comes back down or it gets lost in the woods and somebody has to go find it and they never find the kid for 10 days. Or there's (laughs) there's the kind of camp. Yeah. (laughs) Well, this one particular camp, uh, we had that, that one. It's kind of like an arse, ice breaker. <laughs> an arse breaker. <laughs> Plane rating gone ever, forever now. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Um, it's an accident. You take, yeah, it was because I didn't know what I said. <laughs> and um, you know that game where you take all your shoes off and, uh, and you put them in a big pile? Yeah. And, and then everybody um, tries to get their shoes back on? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, well we did that. And um, – and and so I, I ran up there and I was getting my shoes and I was about to get them and some boy picks up these shoes that looked like my shoes, exactly like my shoes. They said, hey, these are girls' shoes. Oh, man. I was like, oh. Because they were no, all guys playing the yeah. game, huh? Yeah, well, you know, the guys on one team and girls oh, okay. on the other team. I got you, yeah. And, uh, I mean, they were they were teal and and, and then then and then they said candies on them and oh. I didn't – um, but they, they looked like regular, you know, Converse high tops, but they weren't, they were indeed girl shoes oh, and I had been wearing them proudly Ugh. throughout the week. And after that was mentioned, I, I stopped wearing them so proudly, but I had to wear them yeah. because they were the only shoes I brought to camp. Oh man, so that's, that that's my... like my bugle boy jeans story or, or <laughs> in middle school, dude. Oh. Those are my pants. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they were girls' shoes, and I wondered why they were so tight. But being poor <laughs> stinks, dude. Uh, yeah, but- and and what was bad, and I don't know about your family, but it wasn't the shoes that, that were embarrassing. What was bad is when people noticed you were wearing girls' underwear too. So <laughs> that was the bad part right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> wait, that happened to you too? Yeah. Thank God yeah. it was before thongs were really you know, <laughs> big, though. Because <laughs> granny panties and, and boy skivs don't look that much different, really. Hey, tidy whities and granny panties aren't too different, are they? No, they're not. They wear, you know, they chafe a little bit more, but that's about it. All right. Um, I was thinking about these. I don't have a lot of summer camp stories because I really didn't go to summer camp. Most of mine have to do with being, you know, on the adult side of summer camp, you know, helping other kids and get to camp and, you know, taking care of them and all that kind of stuff. But I did go to a summer camp one time and I barely remember this, uh, but it was a, not a Christian camp. It was a Boy Scout camp. And I don't even remember where it was, but it was a week long and we lived in tents um, that were on top of like these pallets, you know, that were on top of, of, uh, of, of bricks and there were stairs that went up to, them. I mean, it was hot. You know, cold showers. It was camping for real. And, yeah. And uh, I had unfortunately recently watched the movie, the original, because the new one wasn't out yet, of course, when I was eight or nine years old. Uh, but I'd watched Parent Trap with Haley Mills and Haley Mills. You know? Yes. And there was uh, there's a Haley notorious Mills. scene where they're trying to get rid of the uh, the girl. You know, her eyes are a little too close together, if you don't mind that. Uh, the Vicky, uh, I believe her name was. They're trying to get rid of her on this camping trip, and they they have this concept that they call submarining. We'll follow her everywhere she goes, and we'll submarine her. And um, you know, I <laughs> I learned about submarining from this show, and what it was is, uh, you know, they 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 took and put stuff in her bed, and they put honey on her feet. And, you know, bears were trying to lick her feet in the morning and, you know, they put a lizard on her canteen and, you know, all these different things. So I, using my creative powers that, you know, I used to use for somewhat evil, uh, <laughs> whenever, somehow we, me and a friend found our way in the campsite when there was no one else around and we decided to find the kids that we hated the most and uh, submarine their, their tent. And um, so I had some string. Don't ask me how, but I did. And I was very inspired by the scene where they string strings all over the, the campsite or the, uh, the, <laughs> the bunk. And the girls wake yes. up and, the, and it triggers uh, buckets that fall and, and feathers that blow, you know, and all this stuff. I mean, that was like the coolest yeah. thing in the world. It's like a Rube Goldverb device. Yeah, yeah. And so I was going to do that in this tent. 
And so we get in there and we're going to just do this, you know, this trick. But have you ever tried to string string inside of a tent? It don't work very good because there's only two points of connection. Yeah. There's a and pole like- and a pole. And there's no <laughs> cross hatching going on. And so, you know, we strung it around the bed and ah, it was just dumb. It was dumb. So we, we twirled, up all, twirled up all the twine again. And I was like, okay, that's not going to work. So we got crazy creative and we went and got branches out of the woods, chopped <laughs> them up with our hands and stuck them all down in their, in their, Man. in their, uh, what's it, the, the, their, uh, sleeping bags. Sleeping bag? So when they got in it, there would be all these crunchy sticks, you know? And then we, we stuck uh toothpaste, a whole bottle of, of, of close up. Oh. Yeah. Cause that was the red toothpaste, um, underneath oh, their hundreds. pillow. Um, so that when they stuck their hands under, there would be pillows and stuff. And then we, we couldn't find a shaving cream. I don't even know that I would know what it was if I had found any. But we did that. And um, and and I, this is why I never do anything bad anymore. Because the few times I tried, I, I, things just blew up out of proportion. My my, yes. my leader got really, really mad. And we were the only two there. And he was like, how did this happen? And immediately, <laughs> my creativity started kicking in to just try to get me out of trouble. So I'm like, dude, me and my friend, we just walked up and we saw these two guys. <laughs> and and um and I was like, "Hey, get out of here." And they ran, which and by this time the dang camp director was there, you know, with like a posse of mm-hmm. scouts, eagle scouts, I think, with claws and hatchets and stuff, and they were going to catch these guys. I don't know what the punishment is in the ranger, the secret society that is, you know, the uh, the uh, boy scouts, but it wasn't going to be pretty. Um, but they they were quizzing me, man. It was like NCI or something, or NCIS, ICIA. <laughs> what did these guys look like? But I I sent them off, and I'm like, they ran off that direction, and the guys are immediately finding holes in my story because they're like, that doesn't lead anywhere. That's into the woods. Well, they they, they still might be out there, you know. So. <laughs> Anyway, I don't remember getting in trouble, and I do remember, though, saying, hey, Billy, my friend, I'm like, you know, I think it would be good if we helped them to clean up their stuff, you know? <laughs> so oh, man. We, we never even got them. We just went and cleaned up and felt guilty, and, and I, we never got busted, never got in trouble. Wow. Um, you don't think they were caught on either? Huh? No, nah, no, nah, they couldn't have. Oh, I was never the boy that was bad. I was always the good boy, you know? And so they believed me. And uh, so that was one of the few times I ever did anything like that. And, and that's why I don't play pranks to this day because, first of all, my pranks get me – I get too carried away. And then second, <laughs> I like getting in trouble, but I don't like being in trouble. So, yeah. Yeah, so, I, yeah I can understand that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So you played the bad guy and the good guy. <laughs> I did it, and then I cleaned it oh, up. Oh, man. Yeah, it was, it, it was like uh, – Oh, what's that show with the the alien with the giant head? I don't even remember now. Um, Jimmy Neutron? No. <laughs> the alien. The alien with the giant head. It's a bad guy. It's all of them. <laughs> it's a cartoon. It's a it's a brand new movie that just went out on DVD. Oh, Mega Mind. Mega Mind. Yeah, I was like Mega Mind. I created the problem, and then I was a hero because I solved it. So. Haven't seen that yet. Oh, so. it's good. You need to you need to watch it. Stop showing podcasting right now and go see it. Okay. <laughs> On fast forward, <laughs> preferably. We'll wait. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, I told you. Loved it. All right, your well, turn. You mentioned Boy Scouts. Yeah, yes. I did. I I have to mention a Boy Scout because I f- totally forgot about it until you mentioned something, but um. Boy Scout camp is is one of the most unique because not only do you go to have a good time, but you don't go to learn and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, it's 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 becoming a man. Boy Scout camp is yeah. And so I, I was uh, at Boy Scout camp. It was in it was one of these. Um, I think they call them rustic camps where you you like kind of have to pack everything in and most everything out. They had a latrine and stuff like that, but so you didn't have to pack that out. But it was like you had to do your own cooking and hmm. everything. So wow. you know, you know, yeah, well, yeah. it's Boy Scouts, right? Um, so we, uh, it was late one night and um, we had, I was on KP, you know, kitchen patrol or whatever they call it. Yeah. To, to clean, clean the stuff. And so we're cleaning everything and then out in the woods, 
um, me and my cousin, we start hearing this noise, like people running around out there. And it, and it was freaking me out because this was like way out in the woods. I mean, it wasn't like next to a highway or anything. It was just way out in the woods. And so we were freaking out. And um, and so we went back and uh, and this is this is kind of embarrassing to have to share, but I was young. So um, uh, I, I walked and I wanted to be very professional even in my young age. And I wanted to, you know, communicate in a way that sounded like I knew what I was talking about. And, um, and I wanted to be real good about this. So I went to the, the scout master and I said, um, sir, uh, I believe there are some people out in the woods and I'm not sure what their intentions are, but, um, I'm feeling very unsafe <laughs> and I would like it if you would stay in the camp with us for a while. <laughs> Basically, he was afraid he was about to get killed. I was afraid I was going to die. <laughs> so, you know, and the scoutmaster's there, and he's got an axe in his hand. He said, don't worry, son. We're going to take care of everything. <laughs> it's just like, hey. I mean, I was probably, I don't know, 13, uh, <laughs> maybe 14. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. But, um, yeah, I, I, I was turning into a man and, and, and learning to put my not, fears Not behind. very well. Not no. a very strong man. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> But a man all the same. Growing hair apparently classifies you as, <laughs> as turning into a man. I'm feeling unsafe. Will you please stay? Will you put your tent near my tent so I don't have to Can yell? I actually set my tent up inside your tent? That would be that'd probably be the best thing. At Can this I point. sleep in the camper? I remember when oh, the camp counsel, the camp dude told me, you know, the best way to stay warm is to get naked inside of your sleeping bag. And I remember being oh. absolutely mortified that my tent mate was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, oh, my I, goodness. I don't want you to do that. And it's like, how do you say that? You, you have to put on your professional voice and tell them. You know, oh, I would, yes, I'd sir, prefer you I... <laughs> to wear full pajamas at, at scout camp. Scout pajamas if they have them. Yes. You can even wear, body. get your badges and put in felt on your, on your Boy Scout pajamas. <laughs> So that you might got a merit them. badge for sleeping. Yes, it's not sleeping nude. That's a different merit <laughs> yes. badge. Ugh. you don't learn those in Boy Scouts. Ugh. so, all right. Um, I got one. Um, this was this was my my first year. Uh, I was kind of on my way to becoming the children's pastor, but there was this year or this summer of transition between me and the guy that was outgoing. And he had a summer camp already planned, so they, you know, he did it all, and we just rented the camp. So I was there as a counselor, even though, you know, everybody was getting to know me as the new dude. So yeah. um, this was the same year, by the way, that we, that I made the kid uh, hyperventilate to the point that he had to go to the hospital, or almost did. I can't remember how it went down. Uh, but, but we were going around. The big thing to do was to prank people you know at, at camp that's what you do oh, yeah and yeah, yeah. uh you know some of the kids were uh have saran wrap on the toilets so that when the kids lifted the seat and peed you know it <laughs> splashed on them or, or even better if they did number two it would just sit <laughs> right there <laughs> yeah like like you were sitting on a banana um a brown banana but oh. and then it, it, but the other things <laughs> they were doing is they were they were like a crowd of kids would rush into another room and start pillow fighting, you know, or even uh, rat tailing with the, with their towels, you know? Oh yeah. So, you know, you, that happened to us. And then my boys were up, you know, it was time to go. So we go around yeah. all that to say, there was this one counselor guy and I can say this now cause I'm not there anymore. <laughs> he, he was as white as you and I, but he prided himself somehow, somehow, some way he was, he was completely convinced. Have you ever, you've seen these white guys that try to thug around, like you know they're oh, from yeah. they're from the suburbs, but man, you know they they think they're they're thugging. You know, well this guy had convinced himself that he was like that, except about being a Native American. Oh, okay. Oh, what is there a word for that? Even I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'm sure they have a word for it. <laughs> you know, if there's a white man doing something stupid, there's a name for it. And trust me, yeah. that's the GOK for today. Um, but anyway, uh, I think actually they coined the phrase white man, and I think that's actually <laughs> what, it, what it stands it for. It covers it. Stupid. It covers everything. <laughs> but uh, so this guy had grown his hair out long, and he wore – 
you know, he was as Indian as I am. I mean, I, I had a great grandmother that was, you know, Seminole. Okay. I don't claim it. I think for me to claim any kind of heritage would be offensive to people that really are Seminole, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And, and I might be trying to take their college fund money or something. So I'm not going to play it. Okay. But this guy, he, he must've had somebody in there that, but but look at him. You'd never guess. Anyway, point being, um, (laughs) I went, we decided to attack his room. (laughs) Oh no. And all I remember is is that he was ready for us? No. <laughs> you have a tomahawk. He, he was he was laying in wait. Okay, he was probably I imagine laying in wait every night. You know, and just in case, you know, just They're coming to get me. Well, just just like Pick you know, a, a tra- yeah, like a traditional Native American would be. You know, if if they made uh, Chinese movies style out of them, or these super ninja, you know, a, 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 a Indian fellas. Um, but I just imagine him sitting there in his <laughs> in his in his chaps, you know, uh, smoking a pipe and, and and staring at the back of that door. Because when we busted that door open, no lights came on. We never even made it in. There was just this pair of glowing eyes. I swear, I still remember him glowing white. And he just said, <laughs> "Do not enter here." <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if it was him or his spirit guide or what. <laughs> but his white spirit guide. <laughs> don't you enter in here. And all I know is is suddenly, you know, an old man on a horse ran in and he cried about the litter and, you know, some cigarettes <laughs> were there and, you know, oh, no. everything. Every Native American stereotype just jumped through oh our hoot and scared us away. <laughs> and... um uh, That's so wrong. yeah, he, he do not enter. Do, he, it was just he. Fe- I felt like he was demon possessed. I really did, because he just his voice got all deep, and he was just there. He was there like Conan or something, you know, the barbarian, just ready to pounce. Do not enter. And um, so we just closed the door and we moved on. And I think I think he scared the kids he was trying to protect. I really do, but they couldn't escape. So nice. He had him in a sweat box for the love, so he <laughs> couldn't get out. Gee whiz. Anyway. Oh my gosh. <sighs> yeah. Oh man. Well, you know, camp is is good like that. It 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 it, uh, it it brings you to a different level. But there's some things at camp that you just can't do, mm. or at least you don't want to do. Showering is one. Yes. You no, know, you're afraid to shower because usually, I mean, for me, that was my first experience with. Uh, not necessarily group showering, but you know, showers where there's dudes. not really any privacy. Yeah, and there's a yeah. bunch of dudes around, and I don't know. I, I, yeah, I just I feel you, bro. About that. But but going going at camp, and when I say going, I mean pooping. you know going. Yeah, pooping. It's the worst. Um, it, it is the worst. I mean, I remember you know as a, as a young man, uh, going like only once. And and that's something that you usually need to do more than once, especially that camp food, man, because that junk gets in you. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's all remember, carbs. Yeah, yeah, and it just wants it's and starches just and wants carbs. Exit. Um, but uh, the Georgia camp here in Georgia for the youth camp for the Assemblies of God, um, the core of the building had the bathrooms in it, and the walls didn't go all the way to the ceiling. Mm-mm. So so people would you know sometimes while you were on the potty, they'd climb up the wall and drop stuff on you. And um, so I was even more scared to go at camp. But, you know, you, you get to the point where you just have to or you're going to explode and they're going to take you to the hospital and it's just not fun. Well, uh, just that whole experience of going at camp has always been a frightening thing for me. And even as I grew up and into an adult, it still became somewhat um, difficult. I have no great end to the story. No, no, I understand. Except going at camp is frightening. And it's I think it's something that we can all relate with. Well, it, it opens, it's a gateway story because we took a kid to the hospital one time and he was like, they were swearing it was appendicitis. And we go there and, and they take a, um, they take a, 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 a what's it called? Uh, an x-ray of his stomach and they put it up on the board and you can see his large <laughs> intestine He's full of poo all the way back up to his tummy. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, he's solid. He's solid as rock all the way from his from his sphincter to his to his uh, stomach, and um, 
And that's why, because the homeboy hadn't drank any water and he hadn't been going poo. And so, man, ever since then, uh, I tell kids every time I take a group of kids, I'm like, two things you will do every day. One is you will shower once every 24 hours at least. And two, <laughs> everybody's got to take a dump every day. I don't care. Got to do it. Got to do it. But they had to aerate or, or, you know, they had to pump water up his bunghole, oh, basically. They I was had trying to, give to find him an enema. Yeah, I was trying to find a very classy way to say it, but I couldn't think of it anywhere. So let's just get right down. Talk to, about submariner. Yeah, let's get down to brass tacks. So, uh, oy vey. Mm-mm-mm. Well, I have one more, and, and I mean, I've got a few more, but I'll just share one because I know we're probably punching for time. Unless you had something more you had to say. No, no, I'm done, man. Okay, I'm about to take a nap. Okay, well, here, let me let me let this let this come out then. Um. When I was in college, I toured with the drama group. You might not know this. It was pretty awesome. I yeah. toured with the drama group. We went all over the place during the summer to youth camps. To uh, you know, we were kind of like the the ministry sort of part. We didn't do the preaching. We just did the drama. The stuff. sticks. And, yeah. 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 You saw that. Yeah. The video. Uh-huh. Awesome. Lemonade. Cool. Lemonade. Watermelon. Lemonade. <laughs> yes. That was awesome. Sorry, there was um, a part of his pattern that said lemonade, lemonade, watermelon, lemonade, lemonade. So now you know why yeah. that was a good joke. That was the uh, that was the demon pattern rhythm right there. That's right. Yeah, it was awesome. Anywho, now that nobody knows what we're talking about, um, we were we were at Georgia camp again, and um, I had I had just gotten to the camp because I missed part of the tour because I got sick with mono mm. or something. So, but I I got back in, and so I met him up at Georgia camp, and I'm you know I'm all spiritual because just got over this this sickness really fast, and I'm like healed, and everything's going awesome. So I'm feeling you know I'm gonna do the right thing, I'm gonna do good, and um you know there there were weekends where we wouldn't have anything necessarily to do. We would kind of be trapped at the camp for a little while where there's no campers there, and we'd just kind of be stuck. And you know when you're a college student, you get so hungry. Okay, I mean, especially when you're a guy. I, I, we had five guys, I think, on the team, and we were just we were starving. It was going to be hours before we got to go eat somewhere. And the guys got this bright idea: Hey, let's go, let's go find the fridge because there's this big, huge camp fridge, and it's full of food. And uh, <laughs> let's just go get ourselves a snack. And I, I, being the super spiritual one, said, "Guys, I just I don't think that's the right thing to do. I think we should. You know, I was starving too." Uh, but I said, let's not do that. And they said, no, we're going to do it. <laughs> and I'm like, you guys aren't spiritual. <laughs> and stuff. Nowadays, and so- John, nowadays, John would say, <laughs> what, stealing? <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know. Well, I don't get it. What is stealing? That's what he would do now. But anyway, oh, I'd probably be leading the charge. <laughs> They're going to throw it out anyway. Come on, let's just go grab it. And that was their thought. So they were they they raided the fridge and they were about to eat it. They were hiding in a bathroom, and I pounded on the door and and I stuck my head in and I was going to tell them, you know, hey guys, I don't agree with what you're doing, uh, but can I have some anyway? <laughs> I was going to say that, but they kicked me out. They were I was sticking my I was trying to climb in there and like get out of here. We don't. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> he eating. pushed me out, dude. You could have combined your favorite stuff, eating and pooping, and you you never had, <laughs> you never had a chance. It just gone straight through. Oh, oh man, it was camp food. It was terrible. But stealing food, and that was uh. So you never you know, even got a chance to compromise your beliefs. You just <laughs> I didn't. I mean, it was like I was gonna sin right there, but I didn't oh. because. God knew that I needed to be. Whatever. Attacked. God didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no. You had dumb oh, friends. That's what it was. <laughs> You're a mono oh, boy. Man. Get away from us. That's what it was. They didn't want your it didn't. Ki- kissing disease. <laughs> <laughs> didn't stop us from skinny dipping in the pool. <laughs> uh, that's gross. That's gross. Uh, I won't say anything about that. Good, good. Because, you know, every <laughs> every year that I took kids to camp, I, I had the greatest group of kids in the world, but I know for a fact that when something happened uh, every year that I knew it was one of my kids, and that was every time the girls went, because they had boys swim and the girls swim, and every time the girls went swimming, I would just kind of hear a disturbance, and I'd, I'd look over as a leader, and all my kids would be out of the pool. All the kids from all the churches would be out of the pool, and there'd be some lifeguard fishing a, a, a stool sample out of the pool. Oh, no, no. And and it happened every day. It happened every day. 
They had to shock every the day? pool every day. Same girl, apparently. <laughs> and I just knew it was one of mine. I just knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And and it's it's terrible. It's like, why, what, you know, you really hate going to the bathroom that bad. You're just going to drop one in the pool. Because I can understand being a dude. Because, dude, I mean, I just got back from camp week a week ago. I did three days of kids camp. And I went in there to try to try to have some private time. And, dude, there is tinkle, wee-wee, splatter, patter-patter all over the dang seats. Every one of them. Oh. It's like the boy went in there and dropped his trousers and then went all, you know, I, like, I don't even know what to call it. He just started spinning around as he was peeing. <laughs> like a top, like a, like a dang water, water sprinkler, you know. Because it was everywhere, and 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 I literally went to one of my directors and I said, "Dude, I, I gotta have some time here, but the toilets are filthy, nasty, gross, like super glue. If I sat on that, it would dry, and and it would just not be gross or not be good." So he 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 let me into a special privy, um, just for leaders. It was awesome. It was a like, leader's toilet. Oh, it was so clean. And he um. says, you know, that just choose one. Because he says there's not enough people that know about this, and so each of us have our own private stall. And I thought, oh, oh man, I heard angels singing, dude. It was the best. <laughs> it was the best. <laughs> but I promised I'd tell a story because somebody reminded me of it. On on YouTube, if you go to YouTube channel um, NL Cast, you know, and you look through some of my old videos – you're going to find um, something from June, July 18th, 2008. And it's a series mm. of three or four videos called Camp Candy. Camp oh, Candy King. Yes. Okay. It's a short series of videos that I made for the Southern Missouri Kids Camp uh, week two. The main character, the, the whole thing was he must dominate every position or every portion of camp. So every activity so that he can claim the Camp Candy King's crown. Um, the title and the candy. So there was these two main characters, the cap, the king, and then there was my character who wanted to take the crown from this jerkwad. Well, anyway, there's this one particular scene <laughs> where I get a hold of a golf cart, and I'm whipping around, and I pretend to crash the golf cart, okay? And then the next scene, I'm picking the golf cart. We, we tilted the golf cart over, okay? And that was pretty easy. To tilt the golf cart over is very easy. But I turned yeah. it on its side so that it would look like we'd crashed, and my next scene was to pick it up and put it and write it of course and then get in it and then peel off toward the thing well what you will see in the video is um i pick up the cart and um and i in it and i bump into the cart and then fall down on the ground and i get up and jump in and then peel off toward the water slide area and and it looks all very natural if you didn't know what had actually happened you would never see it so here's what actually happened golf carts um, are very heavy on the bottom and not very heavy up top. All and, the batteries. Yeah, the batteries and just everything that is a golf cart is underneath you. You know, not there's just maybe not even a shell of, above you, but this one had one. So I go to lift it up and it's going really easy, and then it starts going up faster and faster. This all happens <laughs> in a microsecond, you know. But I realize that that this thing is going to right itself very, 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 very fast and very violently. So I actually try to grab it and keep it from going up as fast. But it's gone. So I'm along for the ride, and it and it and it rights itself. It gets absolutely erect. I I my forward momentum is going. I <laughs> slam right in the side of the thing, and it oh. throws me backwards <laughs> like a catapult into the gravel, <laughs> which embeds itself into my knee and scratches up my leg oh. and my shoulder and my chest is hurting. And yet I still jump up, get on the thing, and and peel out, and then they yell cut. And I began to nurse my wounds. Dude, I had scratches and, and got awful amounts of rocks in my leg. It was terrifying and, and horrible. Uh, but, yeah, I was nearly killed by a golf cart. And, um, and so I don't like them. Those, are, those things are so crazy fun they are. and scary. They are. Because there was, al- was also a huge <laughs> hill, and I was a leader, so I was allowed to have one. And I was like, dudes, because uh, there's a governor on it to keep it from going too fast. But if you oh, put yeah. that, but if you put that Joker in neutral and you got a good hill, you could you could oh, yeah. you can go sixty mile an hour in a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> and it didn't take me long. I, I took a few leaders, you know, just like a girl or a guy, you know, and took them up the hill and rode them down, you know. 
And then I realized that the more weight we put on, the faster they would the go. Faster. And so yes. one particular time, I'm like, guys, come on. And, dude, we loaded, I kid you not, 15 people on this thing. They were hanging off the sides. They're sitting in each other's laps. Yes. There's people on top. And we go down that thing, and it was so scary fast. I'm like, in the middle of it, it's too late. I can't hit the brakes. We'll flip around forward. You know, um, <laughs> you'll start tumbling everybody. Oh, oh, I was so scared. But we, cause I, you know, anytime I do stuff like this, I get in trouble. Well, sure enough, I, everybody gets off. They're all happy in this moment where I'm the coolest guy in the world. I'm the adult, but all the teenagers think I'm awesome. And the young adults think I'm cool. And this guy pulls up in a truck and starts yelling at me. You shouldn't do that. That's dangerous. Blah, 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 blah. And then he sees my goatee with a little bit of gray in it. And, and, and he, st- he starts calming down. But it turns out he was some official, you know, that was just there visiting for that one day. Oh, and, man. You know, and his money was involved. Had- and he had authority, but not usually over, you know, because he was never there. But no, what do I do? I wait for the guy that runs the whole camp to come by and. And I, yes. I do something stupid. That's right why in front you don't like to do bad stuff. It's my life, man. I can't get away with jack squat. So, oh man, uh, I didn't even have that on my my dang uh, to do list for tonight. But mm. there it is. There it is. Hey, we got some stuff from our listeners and stuff. Um, yeah. Tell you what, John, you had something you wanted to read first. So while I'm getting everything up, why don't you read that piece of praise right. mail? Praise okay. mail. I just coined. Yeah, that. we always like that. And our and our friend. Joaquin, I think it's Joaquin. He says, greetings from El Salvador. Ah. I've been a follower of the GOK since 2008. And I just wanted to let you know that NLCast gets me through my days at work and puts me in a good mood every time I'm stressed. Keep it up. El Salvador rules. Thank you. Yeah, Yeah, it is. It's cool to hear folks from other parts of the country. (laughs) and. I mean the world. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Yeah, I, El Salvador, <laughs> Texas is my favorite uh, country. It's my favorite other part of the day. country. It's all good. I love you, John. Um, <laughs> this is from Sam. He says, I went to a church camp for a week every year while I was in junior and senior high. And one year, a group of us went for a hike around the lake near the campground. The hike was a two-day thing. Good Lord. We hiked most of the way around one day, spent the night in the woods, and then finish the next morning. That's a hike. Uh, we were about 15 yeah. or 16 at the time. And afterwards, we got done uh, talking um, to the boy. Wait, at the time. And after we got done talking to the Boy Scout at the next camp over, we decided we'd take a walk to see how far we'd need to hike the next day. I don't get all that, but I kind of do. Uh, it only Wait, took is us. Sam a Boy Scout or Sam a girl? Is uh, it Boy Sam or Girl Sam? All I know is he was at Christian camp church camp and apparently there was a camp next door that was a high school i mean a uh, ah, okay. boy scout camp and they were talking to him they decided they'd walk to see how far they'd need to hike it only took us about 15 to 20 minutes to get to the beach that was next to the parking lot that was our final destination so we're walking across the beach and we find a random pile of clothes but no people around <laughs> oh so it oh, was, that's interesting. It was dark. We shined our flashlights out to the lake and saw a couple who was out there skinny <gasps> dipping. So, no. <laughs> of course, we buried their clothes and went back to camp. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> says, I oh, assume man. they found their clothes as they were gone the next morning. Yeah, we're jerks, Sam. No, I think that's <laughs> absolutely awesome. That's, that's brilliant. If they wanted their clothes, they should have kept, kept them, them on. on that gum it. <laughs> we were probably all trying to hide under the water. Oh, there's people coming. There's people. You know, sound carries so well across the water. Oh, my gosh. It's great, though. It's great. Hide. Because what are you going to do if you're the naked people in the, and you see them burying your clothes? What are you going to do? Come out and chase them? I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going to burn the clothes. But I'm a never nude, so, you know, that, that wouldn't happen to me. <laughs> never nude. What is that from? That's so funny. Oh, gosh. I can't even remember. The stupid show. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah! Oh, the one with uh, what's his face? Yeah, and, that guy. Crap. Yeah, Joe. Rest of development. Yeah, there yes. you go. Thank you. That was a great show. Never nude. <laughs> I am a never nude. <laughs> hey, James and John, I have a camp story about the time my idea for a prank ended with a kid wetting himself and hyperventilating. Hey, I can relate. Hey, <laughs> you send in a story, James? I don't know. Maybe I wrote it under a pseudonym or an anonym. Uh, It was a couple years ago, and my second year of camp was coming to a close, and I was determined to prank my cabin before camp ended. And I had a plan. 
I was able to convince two of the junior counselors and the head counselor to join me in my mischievous plot. I waited till everyone was starting to calm down and get sleepy, and then me and the junior counselors left to uh, talk to the nurse or some fake excuse like that. Once out of sight, we circled around. I had one counselor get on the roof and the other under the cabin. And while I walked around to the windows and I slammed the wooden shutters down, the cabin was a raised single-story wood structure with only one room. After I had done that, they started kicking the floor from underneath and stomping on the roof. During this, I went around to the back door and scraped the door with the rocks to make it sound like an animal was back there. <laughs> <laughs> After about two minutes um, of that, I stopped. I screamed. I ran in the cabin, panting and acting like I just saw the scariest thing ever. I was able to convince them that I saw something by the back door. And when I screamed, it ran into <laughs> <Yes>. the woods. <laughs> this thoroughly freaked them out and made, uh, made some of them start to cry. <laughs> but at this that point, me. I couldn't stop. And that's where I'm at. I can't stop. Once I got somebody on the hook, <laughs> I just keep reeling them in. Uh, yes. So after about 10 minutes the, of the junior counselors banging on the roof and under the floor randomly, it went silent. And the junior counselors came running into the cabin, panting and looking terrified. They told the head counselor about the strange creatures chasing them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. At at this the head counselor was doing a good job of acting like he didn't know what was going on, but to be sure there were no monsters outside and so to prove that to the other kids that nothing was going on, he walked out and looked and said, "See, nothing happened." And then he dived to the side and slammed the door closed to make it look like he'd been ripped off his <gasps> feet. <laughs> Oh, nice. We heard him screaming and crying, and then he half pulled the door open in an attempt to pull himself into the cabin, the whole time screaming for help about animals trying to eat him. <laughs> and then he let the door close, screamed extra loud, and then went silent. <laughs> Me and the junior counselors looked and acted like we were scared, and suddenly the head counselor threw the door open and said, Boo! Boo! The whole cabin screamed. <laughs> Kids were falling out of bunks while others peed themselves. Some hid under covers. One little boy hyperventilated <laughs> so bad, he ended up throwing up, and he had to go see the nurse. After this, oh. pranks were no longer allowed at camp, and me and the counselors oh. got talked to about it. Thanks for reading this on the show. And if you don't, I hope Howard has mercy on your soul. Love, Captain <laughs> Narthex. So, yes. Excellent. Good uh, Excellent camp story. See, I would have kept going with the counselor dead. I would have put zombie makeup on his face <laughs> and had him come stumbling in. And I wouldn't have had him chase anybody. See, the kids would have been so scared. I would have had him just come in, stumble in, and roll under one of their beds and then just stay there silently while the kids wondered, what in the freak do we do <laughs> now? He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> oh, man. That's priceless. So that's why I can't do tricks. Oh, gosh. All right. Uh, here's another one. Um, and then we got some voicemails. Uh, Lillian says, I go to camp in New Hampshire. We have this camp New tradition. Hampshire. Yeah, I have this camp tradition in my cabin with two other friends that we dress a broom with a hoodie and nerdy sunglasses, and we consider him our cabin's boyfriend as a little joke. Oh. <laughs> it's a little it's sad, sweet. a little weird. Uh, we'll dance with him <laughs> and stupid stuff like that. <laughs> but there's That's this awesome. girl named Mary Ann, and she got carried away and started making out with the broom head. It was disgusting. Oh, oh those 13-year-olds. Love your podcast, Lillian. <laughs> <laughs> making out, yikes. It's good practice, I suppose. You know, yeah, he was a real stiff. Be better a broom head than a butt head, you know. <laughs> I bet you he was bristling with excitement. <laughs> oh man, I'm trying to make a clean oh. sweep reference, but it's it's just not happening. He's the kind of guy that could sweep you off your feet. Huh? <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> oh man! Please kill me now. <laughs> oh. See, if it was a girlfriend, you could make witch jokes, but uh, anyway. <laughs> That's her car. Hey, uh, it's time for some voicemails. So here is Super Squeaky talking about skate cam. Hey, James. <clears throat> this is Super Squeaky. This is the first hey. time I ever sent in. Um, um, <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> and John. Hi, James and John. My sister Thank made you. me do that because John's kind of a... You know, 
awesome what? this person. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you know. What was he going to say? I really sent in a story. It's about the skateboard camp that I went to. I was the you youngest were? person there. Okay? Okay. It's down at Zero Gravity Whaleback, which is a skate park. Mm. Where, Sounds um, Canadian. By where I live. Okay. So now we, I we're stalking you. Um, <laughs> I went down um, the ramp to go into the foam pit. Foam then pit. somebody just blocked me, grabbed my ankle, and I fell down and got hurt really bad. Uh, bummer. But on a happy note, <laughs> um, <laughs> I played paintball. Yay! <laughs> you jealous? You want to play paintball? Yay! <laughs> yeah, I am you, jealous. You, okay, fine. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I'll play this, this on the show tonight. Yeah. Okay, here's here's our advice to uh, Super Squeaky. Hey, I don't want you calling those guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's so random. <laughs> So a foam pit. I'm, I'm assuming that's a that's a pit full of foam. That's pretty awesome. Now, if it's I would if it's like styrofoam and or that that yellowed corrugated egg crate foam, that's pretty nasty. But if it's mm. like foam, like fluffy foam that you're riding through on your on your wheels, that's pretty awesome. So I can see some how somebody could sneak in and, and grab your ankles and make you fall. That'd be mean. That'd be very mean. It hurt really Chris bad. Cohen wrote in and uh, talking about how he got picked on at camp. So hey, this is Chris Cowan from the No Show Podcast calling for uh, nobody's listening. And I've got a summer camp story. My very first uh, summer camp experience was absolutely terrible. I went to this uh, Christian ranch camp, and <laughs> everybody in my pag in, in my uh, cabin picked on me for no good reason. They just did because Aww, I guess me? they felt like it. Uh, ended up cutting in line at the cafeteria and kicking me and making me cry. It was terrible. And then on top of that, uh, our uh, uh, counselor would only take us to the snack shack if we agreed to buy him something with the money that our so parents low. gave us specifically <laughs> oh, for the man. snack shack. What a punk. He was basically stealing our money. Er. So that was my first uh, camp experience. A lot of fun. Love the show. Catch you guys later. <laughs> okay. You know, that's funny. I mean, it's not funny, but this is funny. Apparently he hung up and it called him back. <laughs> really? <laughs> Over and over again. <laughs> so that's him hanging up? Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, Chris. Christian King. Hello? Hey, how you doing, bud? It's the show calling you back. <laughs> Stop it! Stop calling! <laughs> we still got 18 seconds of this. We're still desperate for callers that we have to call them back. <laughs> our, our, our voicemail line does not want to leave you alone. Hello? Hey. How you doing? <laughs> does, Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey. Keep calling me back. I don't know. We love you. We wanted to hear more. Uh, <laughs> all right. Stop calling me. All right, John. This Stop. is for you. I don't have who it's from, but it's called "Do Deer Fart." So uh, here you go. Hey, what's up, James and John? This is Luke. I follow you guys a lot on Twitter. I'm Luke in progress. Oh uh, yeah, Luke. Just Our buddy in California. Summer summer, I guess, stories you guys had going on there. Um, I got I got one I'd, I'd like to share. This happened when I was about 12 years old. I first moved to Arizona, and they did a camp uh, just for the church. And so, you know, a bunch of 11 to about 18-year-old kids uh, going out to camp, and not just, you know, in motor homes or in dorms, but tent camping. Well, mm. One of the things, uh, you know, you do at a camp is, you know, or uh, when you're camping out, you do the marshmallows and the the campfire <laughs> and all that stuff, the stories. Well, oh, yeah. one thing that came up, and you got to remember a bunch of 11 to 17, 18-year-old kids, including a bunch of guys, one of the questions that came <laughs> up was, do deer fart? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it was one of those questions, and it was one of those <laughs> John, do fart? stop laughing. John, stop laughing. But <laughs> Call me out. Fart. And that was the topic pretty much the whole night, and it led off in all these different stories and and memories of different parts. Well, we went to bed that night full of, you know, s'mores and the whole bit. 
Woke up the next morning. <laughs> a couple of the guys were just sitting there chatting in our tent, and the girls are in the other tent across the way. And, um, <laughs> well, I we all hear a fart. And it was <laughs> a pretty prolonged one. <laughs> and we just start busting up. And just like John is probably right now. See? And we start dying and laughing. Because <laughs> the only thing is the girls are across the way. So I was about to peek my head out and just start yelling at the girls out. Disgusting that was. And I peeked my head out. And there was a deer looking at me. No. And I thought, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> we just talked about this last night, dude. Deer fart. Well, there was a deer staring straight at me. I put my head back inside looked at the guy and said, Guys, deer fart. And, <laughs> no way. Okay, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> a, a deer wasn't sitting outside. But I would oh rather God. have seen a deer than imagine okay. that some of those girls or one of those girls that, you know, I thought were uh, <laughs> pretty, you know, girls. attractive, you know, back then. Uh, That's awesome. Let that out of their back end, you know. I, I would just <laughs> rather imagine the deer. So, that's my story. I will see if uh, <laughs> this makes it on the show. Otherwise, uh, you guys are doing awesome. Keep on. Talk to you later. Keep up something. I don't know what we're supposed to keep up now. Thanks, but yeah, do deer fart? Um, we don't. The, maybe the world will never know, but uh, probably deer deer farts. I don't know. I, do deers pop out pellets like uh, like bunnies do? I think so, yeah. So they're, they're like airsoft rifles when they fart then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know goats can cut the cheese because I, I heard a goat break wind once. Really? Yeah, I was feeding them, uh, I was feeding them cucumbers. Huh. And, and this, I heard this... I was like, I looked over at my sister and I said, was that you? Well, see, she said no. My assumption would be that you have to have, and I, I hate to say this, butt cheeks. In order to fart, I don't know, and I don't think deer I think that changes you know, the tone. But deers and cats, and you know, they're 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 wide open. To it's kind of gross. Burps make noise, and there's no butt that's cheeks there. That's true. That's Air true. Stinker. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, the okay. cheeks do change the tonal quality. They do. Yeah, some people have a tuba. Other people have a piccolo. <laughs> so. Some people have a duck. <laughs> 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 uh, speaking of ducks, Pastor Mikey Wan uh, wrote in, or, or actually voiced in. So uh, let's hear about, it just says, drugged team leaders. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Hey, James and John. This is uh, Mike, Pastor Mikey Wan in the chat room. I was just calling okay. from a rest stop in Illinois. Relevant. To tell you a story about camp, we did camp just a few weeks ago, and um, we do real high competitive team games and stuff. It's really fun. Um, and uh, we always have young adults as team leaders. Well, we had this this uh, this green team beat, beat, beating everybody really badly, and um, the two green team leaders, there were three of them, two of them were guys. Well, two of the guys um, one day took super long naps during our free time, napped for a long, long time, and couldn't, um, uh, couldn't seem to really get up and going after their naps. Um, and so they actually missed, like, part of their, their activities for their team and everything and, and, and lost some points and stuff. It was kind of crazy. And they were talking about how much they had uh, needed that sleep. They just felt so exhausted. Well, getting closer to the end of camp, one of the Orange team leaders, the guy from our church, he comes over to me and he says, Pastor Michael, guess what, dude? Guess what? I was like, what? He's like, I slipped some melatonin in their biscuits and gravy that morning. So he had drugged them. I guess melatonin is something that makes you go to sleep. He drugged these two team leaders with this all-natural sleep remedy, made them sleep through part of their activities and lose points. It was hilarious. I told the guys that give away points that they gave the green team their points back. But it was one of the funniest things that's ever happened. Nobody's ever been drugged <laughs> in my camps before, and I'm so glad it happened because it was a great story. So there you it's go. Awesome. Can't wait for camp next year. Bye. Uh, I want him to be my pastor. I'm so glad Shut it happened. Up. It was terrible, but I'm glad it happened. <laughs> Sounds like something I'd say. That's uh, awesome. All right, oh, John. Man. Go ahead. It brings back so many camp story memories. I'll have to just write them down. Do it. And, and 
We might have to do, yeah, if there's one thing these theme shows are known for, it's known for sparking tons of aftershock stories, if I can call them that. And so we'll end up having to do a a second one, I guarantee you. Um, It's time for us to, I don't know, do our recap song. Ah! Ah! Movie time! Movie time! Oh, sorry. I was on the satellite of love for a minute there. Uh, (laughs) Mr. Saint Series oh 2000 goodness. reference. Okay. All right. I got my uke today. So, uh, John, if you would, uh-huh. feed me some lines. Oh, man. Let's, let's start off with going at camp because it's such a great experience. Okay. My mom packed me lots of drawers with my name on them. But I'll only need one pair because I won't get a thing on them. To make a skiv mark, you've got to do number two. But that's just the one thing that I don't ever want to do. So I'll hold it in, my friend. And something will have to end. Even though cramping is part of it. Mama, you won't catch me giving a flip. Thought you caught me. About to swear, <laughs> but I'm still wearing the same underwear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> skinny dipping and catching skinny dippers. Sounds fun. Well, me and my friends were walking around the lake. It was dark and we were scared, hoping we wouldn't step on a snake. But someone else would beat us to it. They had apparently dropped their drawers and were out there getting to it. And (laughs) so what we did was bury all their stuff. And don't you think they were surprised when they had had enough? All their little wrinkled bodies were left out in the cold. I assume that they weren't old, because they were wrinkled before they even got in. And we buried their clothes and all the sand was in them. So imagine their joy when they finally dried off and they had to dig their clothes out and then get the sand off. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How about pulling mean tricks on somebody and getting caught? Okay. Yeah. Um, If your name is James, then you know better than to do anything bad. Cause you'll probably get busted and they're going (laughs) to catch you whether you like it or not. Whether you're on a golf cart or you're just trying not to get caught. Um, I don't really have anything for this. Um, (laughs) what did I do specifically? (laughs) This is why I could never do recap songs. <laughs> this one, when you messed up the dude's tent and you got busted. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So okay, you okay. had to clean it up. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> I don't have <laughs> And I couldn't remember I what the reference was. It's terrible. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Um, when I was a little boy, I thought I'd try to be so bad. It turned out pretty sad. I submarine something that I'd seen from Haley Mills on TV. John is hot for Haley. Hey. And. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> yes. I stuck some sticks Five down moments. in their sleeping bags. And I took some close up and dumped it underneath the rag they called a pillow. And then we had to make up some trash about how two guys were submarining them. There were several flaws in my story. Why wouldn't they have got everybody? Just the two bullies that I hated most. It it wouldn't take John Grissom to figure out the truth, but I'm thinking that they let me off with just a warning. And anyway, I helped them clean it up, which kind of defeated the purpose of doing it in the first place. And to this day, you'll never catch me picking up a single stick and sticking it anywhere that sticks should not stick. Mm. Anyway. One more, John. Do you have anything for the recap? I just want to know. Do deers fart? Do deers fart? Do they pass gas? Do they do those things even though they don't have much in the back? (laughs) (laughs) Only certain things rhyme with gas, don't you know? It 
and pass. And then the sass. The King James Version word for donkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The King James Version word for donkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The King James Version word for donkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King James Version word for donkey. Yeah. It rhymes with gas. <laughs> High five. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Oh, oh goodness, guys! That's it for this show. We gotta get out of here. John, thank you so much for another awesome episode. Thank you, chat room. Um, make sure you're checking out John's website. He does voiceovers and stuff over at jsteinclover.com. Check out the website that this podcast comes from, podcast.nlcast.com. Email us your thoughts, comments, feedback, whatever. James at nlcast.com. Call us. 2095 NLCast, Facebook and Twitter, slash NLCast for both of those. And uh, join us for a live show Tuesday nights, 9 30 Eastern, 6 30 p.m. Central. Leave an iTunes review if that's how you found us. And check out all of the NLCast Podcast Network shows at NLCast.com. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to Rob Gobers for our theme music that you're hearing right now. It's awesome. Thanks to our spouses for letting us record, our contributors, and everyone who listens. And remember, if you won't tell a funny life story, then don't be wondering why nobody's Nobody's listening. listening. We'll see you guys next week. (laughs) Peace. Yeah. Oh, and hey, while you're at it, go look at Mark Malkoff's newest video where he does a bunch of stuff with uh, Apple Store. Yeah, you can go to uh, podcast.nlcast.com and see that, actually. So that way we get credit for sending them to you, you know? There you go. Do it. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.